In this video lecture, I'm going to be discussing the chain rule. So the chain rule is a differentiation rule that is applied to a function that is of the following type, meaning it is the composition of two functions. So if you've forgotten about the composition of two functions, then please return to that section and recall how composites work. Right, so here in this composition, we've got two functions f and g. And observe that just based on the way that it is written, we can refer to f as the outer function. And I can refer to g as the inner function for the obvious reason that g is on the inside and f is on the outside. So we've got an outer and we've got an inner function in this composition. So now if you were required to compute the derivative of the composition of these two functions, then the derivative is computed in the following way. It will then be the derivative of the outer function, meaning f prime, that is then evaluated at the inner function. So you observe what the inner function is and you leave it within the derivative of f. And you then multiply to the derivative of the inner function. So it's an important slogan. Derivative of the outer evaluated at the inner multiplied to the derivative of the inner. If you remember that, then when computing a derivative of compositions, meaning whenever you're using the chain rule, all you'd have to do is identify the outer and identify the inner. Now, an alternative way would be if you were asked a question in the following way. So suppose that y is a function of some variable u, meaning that we have the following. That's u. Once I meant to write u in there. And suppose that u is a function of x, meaning that u is the following. Right, so y is a function of u and u is a function of x. So the question then is, what is the derivative of y with respect to x? Because observe, I can now create this chain. So y is a function of u and u is a function of x. So the question is, what is dy dx? But also observe that since y is a function of u and u is a function of x, from here I observe that y equals to f of g of x. So this is reverting back to our original problem of um, a composite function. So these two things are equivalent, but now I'm giving you the formulation in a different way. So then the derivative of y with respect to x is actually equal to the derivative of y with respect to u multiplied to the derivative of u with respect to x. And so this is another way of using the chain rule to compute the derivative of the composite of two functions. Right, so now let's look at examples. Right, so compute the derivative of y equals to root of 3x squared plus 4x. So before we even consider talking about the chain rule, quickly recall all of the previous basic rules of differentiation that you have learned. Would any of those rules um, be useful right now? Would you be able to use them immediately? So it's clear that we can't. We need some other intervention which is going to come from the chain rule. So since this is a root, we can rewrite it as 3x squared plus 4x to the power half. And observe here that immediately you find that there is an inner function. Right, so that's your inner function. And you have an outer function, which is your bracket to the power half. So your outer function could be rewritten as perhaps um, y to the power, uh, well, since y and x, we use z to the power half. Right, so we know that we're using the chain rule. So what is y prime? So derivative of the outer function, which is your bracket to the power half. So take the derivative of the bracket to the power half, that is a half to the minus half, right, based on some variable being in there. And then what do we substitute in place for that variable? The inner function, derivative of the outer evaluated at the inner, which is 3x squared plus 4x. And we're not done because the chain rule says that you must then multiply the derivative of the inner function. And what is the derivative of the inner function? 
The derivative of 3x squared plus 4x is 6x plus 4. And that's what I've written down there. And then you can go ahead and you can now simplify wherever possible. So we've got a negative exponent in here. And remember, always rewrite your solutions in positive exponent. So then to rewrite in positive exponent, recall your rule that whenever you have x to the power minus n, you can rewrite it as 1 divided by x to the power n. So using the same principle in here, that's half being multiplied to 1 over 3x squared plus 4x to the power positive half, and it's being multiplied to 6x plus 4. So then again, I observe that this is to the power half, so I can rewrite it as a root. And then just putting everything in place, meaning what belongs in the numerator and what belongs in the denominator, I then have that it's 6x plus 4 divided by 2 times the root of 3x squared plus 4x. Right, and the root of that. And that is how we have used the chain rule to compute the derivative of this function. Right, another example. Right, so now we have y equals to 4x times 3x plus 5 raised to the power 5. Right, so now in here, observe that immediately we have the product of two functions. So I now know that I'm going to be using the product rule. So take that to be u and take that to be v. So then y prime, if you recall your formula, would then be u prime times v being added to v prime times u. So that's just your product rule which I've written down very simply. So let's compute the derivative of this. So we need u prime, the derivative of u prime, the derivative of 4x is 4 and I'm now going to multiply it to v which is 3x plus 5 raised to the power 5 and then add it to the derivative of v which is the derivative of this function. But now once again observe that this requires the chain rule. So there's an inner function, which is 3x plus 5, and there's an outer function, which is that bracket raised to the power 5, and of course you could, the outer, you could perhaps view that as z to the power 5. Right, so taking the derivative of this function, how would we use it? It's the derivative of the outer function, evaluated at the inner, multiplied to the derivative of the inner. So I now need the derivative of the outer function. So that's going to be 5 times what, whatever that variable was raised to the power 4. I'm evaluating it at the inner function, which is 3x plus 5. And then I have to multiply by the derivative of the inner function. So I'll just complete, compute that in the next step. Right, so now let's simplify as much as possible. So this I will leave as it is. And now let's compute that derivative. Right, so then that derivative there. Right, so before I proceed, you would observe that I've missed out something. So go back to the step. I was supposed to take u prime and multiply it to v, and yes, I've done that. Then I need to add it to v prime and multiply it to u. So, so far, all I've done in this step was write down v prime. I have not multiplied it to u. So what is u? u is 4x. So now that step is complete. Right, and then continuing with this, I'm just rewritten that term. I'm now going to multiply it to the derivative of 3x plus 5. The derivative of 3x plus 5 is 3, and then, of course, multiply it to 4x. And now in the next step, I could simplify as much as possible again. So 3x plus 5 raised to the power 5, and then simplifying in here, um, I now have 5 times 4, which is 20, times 3, which is 60. So that's 60x being multiplied to 3x plus 5 raised to the power 4. And observe that I've got terms that are common, so let me factor that out. So I can pull out 3x plus 5 raised to the power 4, and then I'll be left with 4 times 3x plus 5 plus 60x and that is the simplified version. So ensure 
that you are comfortable using the chain rule and that you can also use it in in convoluted ways. You can use it in conjunction with your product rule or your quotient rule or any of the other basic rules that we have learned.